I, uh, in my testimony before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I did indeed say what he said. I said uh, I, re I represent one of the group of 1,000, which incidentally was 1,000 at any one time. There were some 2,000 who came through the whole time we were in Washington. And when I referred to the very much larger group within the country, I referred to our membership of our organization. I didn't say a majority. I didn't say all veterans. I said to a very much larger group, which is the some 20,000 members that we have in the country at this particular moment. And that was my reference there. Uh, as to this question of uh, who speaks for the majority and, and all this personal uh, vindictiveness, I really think uh, that that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the question of this war and why it is continuing. Why it's and I really don't think it does justice to those men who have to give up their lives or be maimed or something or in Vietnam now to have two veterans of the war sit here and go at each other's throats. I, I really think we can do better justice to the, to the issue than that. And the issue really is, why can't we set a date? Uh, Mr. O'Neill has simply shrugged this off, saying uh, that would be absurd. I want to know why we can't set a date when we know that the prisoners will come home, when we know that people will stop being maimed for the most senseless purpose in the world, and when we know that that, in fact, can be a solution and release the forces of... Uh, of accommodation in Vietnam, which will not be released as long as we are there and as long as we are helping the South Vietnamese. I'd, uh, I'd certainly like to talk on setting a date, but I suggest that we keep talking about the same two issues we have on the table. Once again, from Mr. Kerry's testimony, that same committee was written, I understand, by Adam Malinsky, your friend. It's interesting to see somebody that has uh, a friend write about his experiences in Vietnam. I wouldn't... How do you know that? He How, says... Wait, uh, wait. How do you know that? Well, uh, Mr. Walensky admitted it in the... Uh, in human events, also in the Boston Globe. I have did to you read uh, Mr. Here. Walensky's letter yes, he yesterday said he edited the... Lyons? No, did I did you read not. his letter? I'd like to finish May I quote his your... letter? No, may I? I'd like to quote your, your speech, if that's satisfactory. Now, wait, you've it just made a charge. The country does not know it yet, but it has created a monster in the form of millions of men who have been taught to deal and trade in violence, who have returned with a sense of anger and a sense of betrayal which no one has yet grasped. I suggest Mr. Kerry is trying to talk for something more than his little group of 20,000. I suggest he was attempting to represent himself as representative of all of us. Second, on the war crimes issue... Well, wait a minute. We've been way past the, uh, the, the thing there. Uh, I'd like about to... The, whether or not uh, your speeches were written for you or well, whether or not... Well, I'm glad the, the group yes, has suddenly jumped no. to 20,000 in the period of this. Mm -hmm. uh, the Whose group has jumped to uh, 20,000? Your group has, you mean? Or? The Vietnam Veterans Against the War. Uh, two days ago in Leonard Lyons in New York... Uh, as a matter of fact, in answer to a charge made by the Vice President of the United States saying uh, a Robert Kennedy speechwriter had written my speech, uh, I would be flattered to have one write my speech, frankly, but uh, in this letter he wrote to the Vice President saying, Dear Mr. Vice President, uh, thank you very much for insinuating I wrote John Kerry's speech. I would have been proud to have done it, but I didn't. Uh, however, in the future, please be sure to mention my name, as it will, uh, as it is sure to help me in my next election. Uh, no, Adam Walensky did not submit a draft to me, and he did not write my speech. Now, as to I the didn't question, say, uh, didn't say that, uh, John. If I can uh, quote Human Events, of May twenty second, nineteen seventy one. Can we move? Uh, can I'd like to I'd like to establish this point. For, former. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy's staffer, Adam Walensky, acknowledged he had helped Kerry put together his eloquent presentation. Walensky said that Kerry, the 1966 Yale class order, was pretty darn good with words all by himself, but added he had a hand in drafting those parts of the Kerry address, which were on television. I think it this didn't. is a relatively minor point. It's your speech I disagree with, <laughs> not, with who, not with who wrote it. Uh, um. My understanding is, is that's what he's told a number of people. The same story has appeared over and over. I think uh, even more important is this point. You happen to feel that you're being vilified. I think you can imagine how the two and a half million of us whom you have vilified feel at this time. You're speaking for two and a half million. I'm speaking for myself. You're speaking for two and a half million. I'd say, uh, I'd say, John, if you polled the American people instead of taking 75 pull the veterans in this country, instead of taking 75 to Bunker Hill, and you ask them the question, do you consider yourself war criminals, you find out that I was speaking to very close to two and a half million. 
Well, it's, that's very, very interesting. I, I, you're speaking for most of the guys in your division and everything else. They feel this way, you think? This is... I'd say that most of the veterans I have met in this time are aware that you uh, did solicit uh, virtually everybody from Coastal Division 11. I had people call me from all over the country whom you had called. Uh, you have financial resources above and beyond ours, and uh, I don't know what results you happen to get. You might tell me how many people did you get from Coastal Division? I, I didn't. I didn't reach any, Mr. O'Neill, because I didn't call any personally and talk to any. However, Apparently, I do have some friends who yeah. came back who did. Apparently, the members and of your organization did. Well, it's very strange. You see, I, I received a letter from one of them, Prompt Two, that said, "Dear John, about John O'Neill, I can't understand how he could possibly represent any majority whatsoever." And this is from somebody who served in your division with you at the same time. In fact, who turned over the last vote to the Vietnamese. I just it's like, very highly interesting, I can, John. I, I should explain the background of this. There were 800. Uh, there are 800 people that served in Coastal Division 11 over the course of the Vietnam War. I've received approximately 12 calls, furthest away being from Honolulu, from people that your organization has contacted. Now, if you happen to read one letter, uh, all I can say it's like your organization. Uh, everybody knows about the 10 percent that don't get the word, and your 20,000 make up about one twentieth of the 10 percent that don't get the word. Well, Dick, I think. I think I really think that this is exactly the point that I am trying to make, and that is that we have never purported to represent any majority, nor can Mr. O'Neill sit here and pretend to talk for two and a half million. He can talk for himself. And I think that this this contest is, is, is ludicrous, that the points to be discussed are the questions of the war, and that's the issue we should get to, and I'd like to talk about that in a rational uh, discussion. I suggest right. it is... Uh, Time to move on. I'd like to wake, make one last point, if I could, but I, I think I think it's very essential to the American people's uh, right to know and so on. And so. All right, but uh, the world's favorite mother has some important news about bathtub safety. Watch, we'll be right back. Laurie's seasoned salt. It's great on all kinds of meat, on salads and on chicken too. Now. Uh, I can, uh, I was going to say, uh, Mr. Cabot, I can certainly see uh, Mr. Kerry's reticence to discuss those issues, and I do agree the war is a very important issue, and I think it's a shame that he and his organization couldn't have been discussing just the war, had their own viewpoint on that all the way along the line. I think what is particularly pathetic, the fact, number one, that they attempted to speak for all veterans, which is clearly on the record, and fact number two, fact number two, and if we've accomplished nothing else, at least we've stopped that, and fact number two, that they purported to represent represent all of us as, as war criminals, and I guess we've accomplished that also. I'd, I'd like to make we've, uh, one last we've point. We've all heard the phrase, your organization, your organization, enough. Um, probably, we'll, we'll probably hear it again tonight. I think it's obvious that nobody, uh, either of you can speak for all veterans, and I would hope we would true, agree on sure. that, because yeah. there are these are not the only possible uh, reactions to the war. So uh, maybe it, it would be well if we reduced the uh, personal animosity between the two organizations and talked about some of the issues. Did, um, did you both start out to be career naval officers, each of you? Uh, uh, as I understand, you did, and yet you're not in the Navy now. No, no I, uh, I went to the Naval Academy, and I always uh, figured, Mr. Cabot, that I would uh, give the Navy an, an honest try. And after being in Vietnam for uh, almost three years, I decided I wanted to go home back to Texas. <laughs> I, uh, I, would like to, I would like to stay on this issue just a little bit longer because I think there are some essential things the American people should know. There have been six nationwide television shows, uh, CBS Face the Nation, CBS 60 Minutes, NBC Today Show, National Educational Television, Metro Media, NBC Comment, a number of other shows that have asked Mr. Kerry and I to appear on them for a face-to-face stand-up debate. He's rejected all of those offers. In doing so, I think that he's hurt the American public's right to know right to hear a dialogue instead of a monologue. I think that's another very essential point. This, uh, this question of equal time perturbs me because two presidents have been speaking for the war for the last eight years, and I really don't think it's, uh, it's, it's as though people haven't had the other side. I'd, I'd like to move on to the question the of... Uh, uh, we've had some very serious things raised here tonight, and I'd really like to discuss the issues that are at hand. And I, I think the American people deserve a... a a little more depth mm -hmm. on the question of the war itself at this point. Uh, whether or not uh, uh, 
the group on, on the other side knows it, and in fact they should change their name from Vietnam Veterans for Just Peace to Vietnam Veterans for a Continued War, because that in fact is really what Vietnamization is. It is nothing more... It is nothing more than a way of getting the United States out of Vietnam.